the buddy system is a memory allocation approach that is a compromise between fixed and dynamic partitioning. It allows for partitions of various sizes, including many small partitions, few large ones, or a mix of the two. In the buddy system, the size of every chunk of memory is a power of two. So we have some minimal size and some largest possible partition size. And the size of the largest partition is generally the size of all available memory. In this approach, we will repeatedly split regions of memory into two equal size partitions. It should be clear that L must be less than or equal to U, but there's also various values of K. And in this system, the size of every possible partition is 2K for some value of K. Let's see how the buddy system works with an example. Here are several memory requests by processes A through D for memory chunks of the sizes shown here. Now the total size of memory is 1024 megabytes, which is appropriate because every partition size in the buddy system must be a power of two, and 1024 is two to the 10. The goal of the buddy system is to place every memory request in the smallest possible partition that will hold it, given the restriction that every partition must have a size that is a power of two. So when this request for 32 megabytes comes in, we see that it is much smaller than 1024. In fact, it is also smaller than half of 1024, namely 512. As a result, memory is split into two equal portions, and we continue to look for a partition that can hold this 32 megabyte request. Now 512 is bigger than 32, and so is half of 512, 256. And if we continue this process, we will split 256 into two regions of 128 megabytes, then of 64. And then finally, half of 64 is 32. So we will split this upper region in half and be able to assign process A to the first region in memory that has a partition size of 32 megabytes. Now the buddy system will handle process B's request for 64 megabytes. We look at the two portions of memory. We realize that 512 is too big, and so we will look up first. We can split memory into two regions of size 256. That's also too big, so we look up. 128 is too big, so we look up. And then we reach this point where memory splits into two regions with 64 megabytes. However, the first of those regions contains two more regions, one of which is filled with process A. Therefore, B's request has to go in this region of size 64, right here. Those first two requests happen to be perfect powers of two, but this process also works for other numbers such as 60. So if process C requests 60 megabytes of memory, we start in the middle, 60 is far less than 512, we start searching up, 60 is less than 256, so we will search up, and now we have two regions of size 128. However, 
the upper portion is filled with processes that exclude process C from being placed here. There's only 32 megabytes of free space in this region of memory here. So we will instead search down and split this region of 128 megabytes into two regions of size 64, which means that this split point here is at 192. That's 128 plus 64. And we can put process C right here. And it will consume the whole 64 megabyte partition even though it's only using 60 megabytes of it. That means there is a tiny region of unused memory here. And we've actually seen something like this before. This is an example of internal fragmentation. Recall that internal fragmentation is fragmentation within a partition that cannot be used because the request filling that partition is less than the full size of that partition. Our next request is for 150 megabytes. So starting from 512, we go up. We have two regions of size 256. The top portion is filled with other processes. So we instead will put process D in the lower portion. And half of 256 is 128. That is less than 150. So this request for 150 megabytes actually needs to take up this entire 256 megabyte region of memory, which once again leads to a lot of internal fragmentation. Let's consider now what happens if some of these processes are released from memory before other new processes come in. Consider these new events. We will first release B from memory, then release process A, and then process two more requests. So when B is released from memory, we clear it out, and we are left with a free 64 megabyte slot of memory. Now, the corresponding buddy of this 64 megabyte slot is the 64 megabyte slot immediately above it. But that region of memory is actually split into two by process A. So removing B does not do anything to change the boundaries of memory partitions that currently exist. However, when we release A, we will first simply remove A from memory, but then we will go further. Now that A is gone, we can actually coalesce the partition that previously contained A with its 32 megabyte buddy. These two 32 megabyte slots or buddies are empty, and so they coalesce into one region like so. However, now we have two empty 64 megabyte regions, which are buddies. So these two buddies can also coalesce to create one 128 megabyte region. These two processes have now been released from memory. Now, when E makes a request for 100 megabytes, we will go through our usual process. We start in the middle, and then go up because 100 is less than 512. 100 is less than 256, so we go up again. 100 is less than 128, and we go up. And because 100 is between 64 and 128, we can actually use this newly coalesced region of memory to store process E. Now comes our final request, process F which also wants 100 megabytes. We start at the middle, 
and go up and we have regions of 256 megabytes. However, when we go up again, we see that the two 128 megabyte portions are both occupied, at least partially. And so we will then check here and see that this 256 region is occupied. And so we will then have to go down from this initial 512 split. So from 512, we go to the halfway point between 512 and 1024, which is 768. And we have two regions of size 256. Now 256 is too large for this request, so from this point we then go up and split this region of memory into two 128 megabyte regions and the split point for that is 640. Now these regions are both 128 megabytes large therefore they're just the right size to hold this request and we always favor the portion on top so our 100 megabytes will go right here. This process shows how the buddy system can add processes to memory and then release those memory regions and then add more processes back. Another way to visualize how the buddy system works is by using binary trees. Specifically, we will draw a binary tree in which a node has two children if the memory at a given depth is split. The first node will correspond to the entirety of memory. We'll draw it at the center point of memory but all the way to the left so that we have room for the tree to branch out to the right. So the size of memory is 1024 megabytes. This is 2 to the 10. Now because memory is split at 512 we will draw two branches off of this node that align with the halfway points of the child regions. So the center point of this region of 512 megabytes is right here at 768. So I'll draw child node here. And the halfway point in the upper region is at 256. So I'll draw that child node right here. Each of these memory regions is 512 megabytes large, which is 2 to the 9. Now I'll go one level deeper, starting from this child node. So the middle point between 512 and 768 is 640. I'll put that child node right here. And there is no split between 768 and 1024, but if there were, it would go right here. Now at this point I'm going to start distinguishing how these nodes are drawn. The region of memory associated with this node is not split. Therefore I'll color it in to denote that it is a region of memory that is not split and that is also free. And this will actually be a leaf node of this tree. And so I'll connect it with the region of memory that it designates. So a filled in circle will designate a leaf node that is free and an empty circle will designate a split point in memory. So this only applies to non leaf nodes of the tree. Now I also need to split the upper portion of memory up into two and we see that I can draw a node here and another one here. This leaf node also corresponds to a region of memory that is not split, but it is an occupied region of memory. And so I will denote these types of leaves with a different color, like so. 
note that all of these nodes have a size of 256, which is 2 to the 8. Also note that as a leaf node, this will directly connect to the region of memory it corresponds to. Now I can go one level deeper and start splitting up memory more. The next series of splits will look like this. Here we have an occupied node, a split that we still need to fill in, another occupied node, and a free node. These nodes are all of size 2 to the 7 or 128 megabytes. The last level we'll depict in this tree only has children from this node and corresponds to partitions of size 64. And of course 64 is 2 to the 6. So at this level we have an occupied partition and a free partition. And that completely fills out this particular binary tree. So as memory cells coalesce, the tree gets shallower and shallower. And as smaller regions of memory fill up, the tree gets deeper and deeper. This visualization is simply another way of understanding how the buddy system works. Now, although the buddy system strikes a good balance between fixed and dynamic partitioning, it is still inferior to systems using paging and or segmentation, as is done in most modern operating systems. However, the buddy system is still used in limited contexts within some modern systems and is therefore important.